Hi everyone and welcome back to Economics A Level here on YouTube. In this video we're going to look at part one of evaluation. There's going to be four videos on evaluation and this is part one, the basics. So let's get straight into it. So before looking at some of the evaluative techniques that are needed to do good evaluation at A level, we need to look at what evaluation actually is. And I'd say that the whole point of evaluation is to show an examiner that you can make judgments and present arguments. And so the whole point of it then is to create a debate and discussion with your essays with the purpose of steering the reader to your assessment or judgment of the validity or otherwise of the economic theories and ideas within your essays. So to do this, you're going to have to like critique assumptions economists make and schools of economists make critique also the assumptions behind models. You have to change ceteris paribus to show that you can think in an interconnected, joined up manner. And all of this is based upon sound analysis. And we looked at analysis in a previous video. So click in the top right hand corner now if you want to go back and be refreshed about how to do sound analysis. And then finally, evaluation is all about concluding and weighing up and judging the weight of all the arguments throughout the essay that you've made and coming to a conclusion about which of the arguments presented is the strongest or weakest within the context of that essay. So as you can see, there are a variety of words that can be used to tell you to evaluate in an essay. So normally you see the words assess and discuss, but sometimes you might see to what extent or critically analyse. So that's obviously not saying just do analysis. It's got the word critically there. It's asking you to consider both sides of an argument and the debate. So there are a number of secrets then in order to get your evaluation to be a success in an exam. You've obviously got a signal to the examiner that you're about to do evaluation so that they know that it's coming up. And then a lot of the things that follow that on this list are very much related to what we looked at when we looked at analysis. So if you want those in more detail, go back to that analysis video. Of course, this time we're going to be changing Ceteris Paribus, not keeping everything else constant. And we're looking to make judgments about the validity or strength and weaknesses of various arguments when we're evaluating. That's where the difference between evaluation and analysis will come in. So in terms of signalling that you're about to undertake evaluation, I would say step number one would be to start a new paragraph. It is much easier for an examiner or your teacher to read an essay if you've got the analysis of a point in one paragraph and then the counter argument, the evaluation to that in another paragraph separated by a line so it's clear where that is. In addition, you should begin evaluation with phrases like, however, on the other hand, in contrast, or any of those that you can see at the moment on the screen. And this just consolidates for the reader that you're going to take the other side of the argument. So it's important also, as it was with analysis, to be precise. I don't want to spend too long on this because I've done this already in an analysis video, which you can go back and watch. But Again, it's not forgetting parts of explanations. So for example, this is how not to do it. You don't just go, however, increasing income tax causes unemployment to rise. You'll need an explanation of why that is, which you can see on the screen. If income tax goes up, people will feel less incentivized to work. The opportunity cost of going out to work may be higher than just staying at home than it was before. And therefore, unemployment may rise. This will be exacerbated, secondary effect by falling disposable incomes, less consumption, less aggregate demand, lower GDP and increased unemployment along with that. So you see the difference between the two of those, like one is being very precise in how you're going about explaining things. So it's the same technique as it was with analysis, but from the other perspective this time. Again, as for analysis, being clear is extremely important. So basically, don't write ambiguously. So the top example on the screen is ambiguous because it says the changing demand. Well, is it going up? Is it going down? And why is the confidence of foreign savers an issue? So the good example below goes on and explains why that is an issue and the change in demand. So have a read of that and you'll see what being unambiguous should look like. Again, as with analysis, being extremely logical, going from step to step, A leads to B, cause C, and so forth, is extremely important when evaluating. The technique is the same as that for analysis. 
So here you can see the piece of analysis is that reducing the interest rate is going to increase growth and that it tells you the reason for that. And then the evaluation goes on to say, well, it depends on, it depends on being a good evaluative technique. And here we're saying that it depends on the stage of the economic cycle the country is at as to whether reducing interest rates will cause growth. And as you can see, the example looks at if we're in a recession, consumption will be low because consumer confidence is low. The reason for this, i.e. it's explaining and going logically step by step, is because of risk aversion, because of possible loss of job. If this is the case, firms' profits are lower and therefore consumption will be lower again. This is the paradox of thrift and GDP might actually be falling. We reach via all these steps, a consequence and a result, which is what logical step-by-step -step analysis and evaluation is supposed to do. So that concludes the first of the four videos on evaluation. In the next video, we're going to look at some basic evaluative techniques, the ones that you can see on the screen there. And then after that, we're going to look at some slightly more advanced evaluative techniques in the next video, and then evaluation for A star in the final video. So if you want to go straight to the next video, click now. Don't forget to like and subscribe and post any comments in the comment section about what videos you want to see made to help you learn economics going on into the future. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.